Here we are back at the bench and today as I mentioned in a previous video I'm going to look at this Futaba 9C. Now these are a very well, were a very popular radio and they're still an excellent radio. Uh, years, well it must be nearly 10 years I suppose since they made the 9C and I'm going to compare it. Um, I say this has got a fault. Uh, it's an intermittent fault occasionally. The stick on the right hand side, the aileron input or whatever, doesn't work as it should. It uh, jitters or doesn't have any throw or something according to the guy whose radio this is. So unfortunately intermittent faults can be a bit tricky to find and especially if they only happen when the system's you know first turned on or something and then they come right. So we're doing my best to find out what's wrong with it but I figured well at the same time why not compare the 9C to a more contemporary radio like the 9X. This is the my very original IMAX 9X actually from uh, these are the Flysky radios. So these are sold now more commonly as the Turnergy 9X. Pretty much the same radio, not much has changed inside. Minor revisions to the circuit board and that's about it. So let's take a look at these two radios. Let's compare them. Let's see if we can find out what's wrong with the Futaba one. Now you'll see that both radios, like most radios these days, pretty similar. I've got LCD screen down here. I've got two stick units. I fly mode one and so does this guy actually. Paul flies mode one as well. So the throttle on these ones are on the right. Most people fly mode two with the throttle on the left but doesn't make any difference and as you can see um, they've all got little little knobs to turn um, knobs on here and switches and so forth and we all know how they work so let's start by taking a look inside the 9c see if we can find out what's going on in there right I thought I'd take a moment to explain how these radio systems work and how we get the signals and what we're going to be looking for when we open up this radio. So basically let's start over here. We have a stick unit which I'll try and draw like this. Here's your stick unit. Stick unit is connected through some wires obviously to a device that we call an analog to digital converter which then goes off into the computer CPU. And the CPU sometimes these are these are normally sort of in the same chip but basically what happens is across the stick here we have some voltage often it's like plus five volts and then we have zero volts down here and the potentiometer is often drawn like this we'll have our plus five up there and our zero there and it's basically a variable resistor but it's more than just a variable resistor because as we move our stick unit up towards the five volts the voltage on here will go from say at the middle point it'll be 2.5 volts and as we move it towards the top this voltage will creep up and if we move it down towards the bottom again by using our stick the voltage will come down. So you can see that we'll get a range of voltages normally it's not that great a range it's probably from something in the vicinity of 2 volts to 3 volts. So 2 volts will be like full left aileron and 3 volts might be full right aileron. And the computer goes through this and it turns this voltage so we have a voltage going in here turns that into a whole lot of ones and zeros so it'll put a number out which goes into the CPU because CPUs only work with numbers they can only crunch numbers they can't they can't tell anything so anything you put into the computer on your radio has to come in numeric form even if it starts off as a voltage it gets converted into numerics so the problem we've got is that when this guy turns the radio on sometimes the stick doesn't work sometimes the the aileron stick doesn't work or and I've noticed that um, sometimes it's a bit jittery. So what's happening is either this voltage here is going up and down or not going up and down. So as to say there's a problem either with the pot here or with the A to DC converter or obviously the CPU. Um, but what we'll do is we'll do a systematic step through. The first thing we've got to check for of course is put a oscilloscope on here and we'll see what this voltage looks like. Normally the voltage will be a nice straight voltage until we move the stick and then it will go up and down so you'll be able to see on the oscilloscope that there'll be a line goes goes up and down according to what voltage is on there. Now it should not have any noise on it like this and it shouldn't go up and down by itself because that means there's a problem and that problem means if there is a voltage going up and down on there which is what appears to be the case then either the potentiometer here is dirty so that the little contact the little wiper that connects the middle contact to the actual carbon pot itself may have a bit of dirt under it and it may be that it just as you move it, it the dirt moves off and up and down so instead of getting a nice smooth transition it's jumpy and sometimes that dirt's enough just to create a bit of static noise when nothing's moving at all. Otherwise if there's a fault in this part of the circuitry the ADC 
then it could be feeding a noisy voltage back down this line. So we'd still see noise on this line, still see some of this horrible noise, but instead of coming from the pot, it might be coming from there. So what we'll do is we'll first of all we'll check and measure to make sure there's noise on that line that's actually there and it's not actually happening in the CPU. And if we do find noise on that line, then what we have to do is disconnect the pot and see if the noise is still there. Okay, my apologies for this, but the microphone had a bit of a spaz during the filming of this, so I'm overdubbing this a little bit now. I've got the back off the transmitter, which involved removing the battery and also removing the frequency module. And if you look at it, you'll notice there's quite a bit of stuff inside these radios. Quite a large logic board down the bottom there. And there's another little board with the antenna stuff, a long wire, of course. Then there are a multitude of tiny little circuit boards around the edges, which have switches and the pots connected to them and what you should do whenever you pull a radio like this apart if you're unsure get your camera out take some photos because the if anything goes wrong if you have a wire fall off or you can't figure out how to put stuff back together then you just re refer to your photographs your digital photographs and it makes life much simpler but when you're looking at a radio like this with a hope with a view to repairing it first thing to do is have a really good look at it because electronics themselves are generally fairly reliable so what you're probably going to find is that there may be a mechanical fault there could be a frayed wire there could be a screw loose that's dropped around inside or who knows what even these long wire antennas can come loose or the wires can break off the bottom so give it a good once over with your eyes you'll never know what you'll find Okay, the first place to look, obviously, if you've got something wrong with the stick unit, is the stick unit. And you notice there's a lot of wiring associated with it. And the wiring comes up to this little board here. And that board is actually mounted on the potentiometer, which you'll see underneath there. So when we move the stick unit, the wiring, the whole board actually moves. And that could cause some problems, because whenever you bend wires like that, there's a certain amount of fatigue can set in. Now, on a good radio like the Futaba here, they've actually stress relieved the wiring. So it doesn't just solder straight onto the board. It actually goes through a little relieving thing, see a dab of glue on there. And then it goes to a little plastic support, even where it solders onto the board. So these wires are very unlikely to have actually broken, despite the fact that they flex backwards and forwards every time you move the stick in another direction. And you can see if I twist it over, you see the little plastic block there that actually supports the wires, the pins where they go onto the circuit board. So all in all, it's a, it's a pretty good, pretty robust design. So I'm not expecting to find a problem there. Uh, one of the problems though is that if it's not the stick unit, if it's on the logic board, then there's probably not a lot I'm going to be able to do on this radio because I don't have the Futaba service manual. I don't have access to the special Futaba branded parts, which may not be available from regular outlets. So... I guess I'm just going to check and see what I can find out here. Yeah, the wiring looks intact, but I'll double check it. And I'll make sure that when I move the stick, there's nothing going on that's unexpected. And uh, sometimes the wire does break inside there, but yeah, it's, it's not often. Although this is an old radio, so who knows? So what I'll do now is I shall set about measuring, making sure it's all working as expected. Okay, what I've done temporarily here is, because it's really hard to hook up, any kind of connection onto these little pins. I've soldered just a little bit of wire on here so that I can hook up my meter and monitor what's happening on this potentiometer. And uh, I put it on my meter and I get a change in resistance when I move the pot lever, which is what I'd expect, but that's not really telling me very much. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hook it up onto the scope and I'm just gonna see whether the voltage on the center wire remains constant and that'll tell me if there's any kind of noise or whatever going on that's affecting the throws of the uh, aileron channel in this case. Okay I've got the scope hooked up and I'm going to power up the radio. Right now I've got the 9C put into servo mode which shows the channels as we move the sticks around you can see that the little bars on the transmitter move to show the Oh, here we go. There's something interesting happening there. Oh, yes. There's a, if we look at the oscilloscope here, I'm not touching anything. Let's zoom in a bit on this. You can see that line's moving up and down by itself. So there's some noise on the pot unit there. I'm still able to move it. Oh, look at that by hand. But look at all the noise on there. So there's something putting a whole lot of noise onto the, it's not more wiring, something causing that to shift around. 
quite noticeably. So let's look a bit closer at what's making that trace move around. It stopped now but it seems to be thermally related perhaps. Now I've switched to monitoring the voltage that's going into the pot and it seems quite stable. There's no voltage change. So the voltage across the pot itself is quite stable but the voltage that comes out of the pot was shifting quite noticeably. It seems to have settled a bit now. Uh, two, these are the two resistors I've put in there. I've cut the little tracks on the circuit board down there so that the pot is disconnected. These two resistors are going to pretend to be a pot except that they just have a fixed value so nothing will move. So we should get a nice steady signal on our voltage line going into the circuit board down here. Okay so I have disconnected the, I'll get my hand out of the way, disconnected the aileron stick. It doesn't do anything anymore. The throttle and the other stick still work but the aileron stick is disconnected to see whether the noise is coming from the pot or from the gate. Now if it was coming from the pot we should get a nice steady signal because the pot's been disconnected. But if it's coming from the actual electronics on the circuit board then we're still going to get that noise. Let's see what it looks like. Okay and we're now monitoring the voltage that's going into the gate and we can see that's jumping up and down all by itself. So it doesn't look like it's the pot. It seems to be the circuit that the pot connects to is introducing a whole lot of noise. So this is one of the circuits on the main board. I don't think we're going to be able to fix this. I hoped it would simply be the pot and we could give it a clean or uh, or replace it but it looks like it is one of the integrated circuits on the main board and it's causing that voltage to jump up and down all by itself because the pot at this stage is completely disconnected. And it's unfortunate because I don't have any uh, circuit diagrams for the 9C so if he wants it fixed he'll have to take it to an authorised service dealer but basically I hope you've seen how I've been able to sort of track this fault by disconnecting the bits that it could be it just leaves the bits that it is. So there we go all back together and hopefully it's still working. Yes it all still works as it should. Um, not always a fix. These older radios um, they were more serviceable than some of the new ones but I've got to say that when you get to a brand name radio like the Futaba you need the schematics to really find your way around the circuit diagram to find your way around and make sure you're going to get uh, the information you need to fix it. And this one it's, it's a fault on the logic board. I don't have the circuit so that's too bad. Um, it probably would be best to find a Futaba agent because I could spend a lot of time, time trying to reverse engineer it but as I say I, I just do this for people who uh, want me to take a quick look and I took a quick look and at least we know where the fault lies.